more and more we're hearing about online coaches and digital businesses letting their customers down. Too much marketing hype and not enough substance. Today I've got a story for you, and boy, oh boy, is it a good one. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to a thread that I found on Reddit, one of the Am I an Asshole posts, and I want your opinion. I'll give you mine, but let me know what you think. Let me read this story to you, and you let me know who you think is in the right and who you think is in the wrong. I'll pull it up here so you can follow along. Just so you know, details like money, names, even the type of service have all been changed to keep people's privacy and to keep anonymity intact. The story reads as follows. About a year ago, an influencer chef I follow started an exclusive membership. The membership had a $500 one-time fee noted on the website that would soon be increased. He had some great context up for free and I liked his vibe. I knew I likely wouldn't have time to cook anytime soon, but figured since it's a one-time fee, I can access it later whenever I do end up finding time to learn, so I purchased the membership before the price increased. A few weeks later, the price was increased and that one-time notation was changed to annual. I tell myself that this was a good impulsive purchase since if I had waited, I would have to pay per year instead of just a one-time fee. Sounds good so far, but it keeps going. A year later, which would be this week, I got an email notification from him that my membership was accidentally set up as a one-time payment and won't automatically renew a year later. He will be cancelling at the one-year mark, but here's a code for renewal in case I decide to sign up. This takes me by surprise, and we have some back and forth. I respond by confirming what one-time meant, as if I misunderstood stood as my membership was supposed to be a one-time fee. My understanding of one time would be that you're paying once and not every year. They reinforce it's always supposed to be annual and is advertised as yearly. A lot of effort goes into the context to have that price for a lifetime. I send a screenshot of the old price where the website used to indicate one time and I state I would have appreciated to make an informed, educated decision at the time of purchase and definitely not questioning their prices or amount of effort they have put into their craft. Also, I have barely used the service over the past year and not realizing that there was a time limit. Had I known it's annual, I wouldn't have purchased it until I was more dedicated to cooking. They add that there was an error. Customers who signed up in between X dates had this happen. Someone else had set their website up for them. This glitch just came to their attention today. Prior to this exchange, I had literally started using their service earlier that day and was planning to use it more often as a hobby. Wow, there's a lot to unpack, but it keeps going. I'm not debating if the content is worth it. He's very successful, has a huge following, I value his advice, and have lots to learn. What I'm debating is me purchasing something advertised as one time and finding out the day before it's being cancelled. At no point during the course of the year was I told the terms have changed. If the influencer chose to have someone else set up the service, then that's between them too. Those two. My agreement would be with the seller, and them not honoring this agreement doesn't make sense. At the same time, though, he obviously has worked hard to get where he is and likely puts in a lot of effort. It's also a small business, so he would be impacted. And as for me, although I do value their service, I don't want to force them to give me access or bargain for a price as well as the right to ask for what we think we deserve. After this, I likely won't repurchase unless I really need their videos and can't find an alternative. However, I do feel bad when it's a small business and technically it's not his fault I didn't use the service for the past year. Also, I do feel guilty for thinking he must have changed his mind after offering the one time instead of annual. It could be an honest mistake. Wouldn't expect him to be the whole legal and marketing team. So the question is, 
who's the asshole here? Before we go any further, I want to know who you think is the asshole in this situation. Who's right? Who's wrong? How would you handle this situation? Let me know how you'd handle it, both from the perspective of the customer who's writing this story and from the perspective of that small business owner who's dealing with this type of potentially mistake. I'd love your feedback. Pause the video now. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments because I'm about to share mine with you. So let's start by talking about this from the customer's perspective. I first want to give a shout out to this poster for the way that they are handling this situation. I think it's pretty um, well balanced, their thoughts and opinions and approach to this uh, unfortunate situation. So let's break it down. Giant high five to this poster for having taken a screenshot of the marketing copy before they purchased so that they had proof of what the website actually said when they made Made that initial purchase where it said it was a one-time fee and now they can see that it has been changed to an annual fee. Having that as backup for you is essential. And I know myself, I've purchased a lot of these one-time initial setup offers, um, but I didn't go through the trouble of taking those screenshots. And I know having read this situation, I'm 100% doing that from now on just to cover my butt. I also want to give props to this poster for commenting on the impact this transaction and this mistake and misunderstanding will have on the bottom line of that small business owner. But I want this poster to recognize that just because you didn't use the service that was advertised as being a one-time lifetime offer, it's not her fault or it's not his fault or it's not their fault for having not used the service. Because when they purchased it initially, they had a completely different timeline of use in mind. So that is in no way something that this poster needs to apologize for. Now this customer could do two different things. They could continue this cordial back and forth uh, discussion with the, the business owner. They can create a better option. We talk about this a lot when it comes to negotiation skills, is instead of looking at just the pizza that's on the table, this is my, my favorite analogy. Imagine that you're at a party and you have eight people at your party, or let's say you have seven people at your party, an odd number is always better. You have seven people at your party and you've just ordered a pizza. Now you're trying to figure out how many slices does everyone get, but you open your pizza box and you realize there's seven people, but there's only six slices of pizza. So instead of fighting over it and trying to recut the lines, I always ask people to take a step back and look at the entire table because maybe you have chicken wings and garlic breads and salads. Maybe you have someone in your group who's a vegan who doesn't want pizza in the first place and who would rather have the salad. When we take that different perspective, when we stand back and take in the entirety of what's happening, we're able to come up with better solutions. So from a negotiation perspective, this person might be able to negotiate having that lifetime membership at the single price, but also becoming more involved in their social following. I've done a lot of these kinds of deals with clients and influencers, not because of um, mix-ups in business transactions, but because of our ability to step back and take in the whole picture, see those better potential deals. Now, the other thing this customer could do is the complete opposite of that. This customer could start naming and shaming across social media. In this post, they were gracious enough to remove any names, identifying marks, any prices got changed. Even the industry in this post got changed just so that we can understand the crux of the issue as opposed to knowing all of these details. So they could have gone completely in the more public way and really named and shamed this person. Which if they're trying, if this business owner is trying to build a following and is leveraging their community and their followers in order to have these transactions, to have this membership available, well, that could be incredibly detrimental, far more detrimental than a $500 uh, membership. So 10 points for the more cautious, thoughtful approach to negotiation. Now, before we go on to the business side of this and what my thoughts are for the business owner himself, well, I want to invite you to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. It's absolutely free. It's a lifetime offer, absolutely free. And you'll get served up all of our fantastic videos, our live streams, and so much more. We'd love to see you around more often. 
All right, now let's talk about this from the business owner's perspective. As a service provider for small businesses, I work with tons of entrepreneurs just like this person who are setting up membership sites, who are setting up sales funnels, who are pretty much what they're doing. These business owners are outsourcing certain parts of their business and marketing to external companies like Visibility Hacking Studios. Disclaimer, we had nothing to do with this situation. What can happen when you do this, though, is that there can be difficulties in communication between those business entities, as exemplified here. This entire situation is because of one word change and a whole bunch of headaches on the back end. We'll talk about that in a second. So here's my thoughts. Their sales funnel or the page in which this woman came to in order to purchase her membership was either incorrectly set up, maybe it was copied from a template that was designed as a one-time offer, or what I also think could have happened is they were this membership was doing an initial push for first time members. And maybe they either didn't achieve the number of members that they wanted or they didn't see the same level of access and input from those first initial people. Or they may have actually sold way more than they had forecasted. Or even worse is since it's been a whole year, what might have also happened is that in that year, this membership was unable to sell any recurring memberships or unable to, to meet their, their goal of yearly memberships. Therefore, they're like, we have a whole bunch of members who have only paid once and are expecting regular content, but we don't actually make enough money from this membership to provide that service on an ongoing basis. A year is quite a long time. I've seen way more memberships shut down in that first initial year. This could have been a couple of different bad planning moments overall. Now the question becomes, if this was my membership I was talking about, how would I handle it? simple. This customer was kind enough to reach out and to have a level-headed discussion. I would have honored that. I would have given them their lifetime $500 membership simply to keep that relationship going. Not because I'm bending over backwards for a customer who's complaining, but because this is a genuine misunderstanding where on the part of the business owner lays most of the responsibility. Let's be honest, if you change the copy on your website and expect that people who purchased before that copy got changed, that they're going to uh, be able to go back in a time machine and see what you've changed. Like, no, you made the mistake by changing the wording. You messed up on your site. System. And I know that this was most likely intentional because what we're seeing on the billing end of this is that the customer comes in, purchases their lifetime membership, and that billing cycle was only set up as a one-time payment, as opposed to having been set up as a yearly payment and advertised accidentally as a lifetime payment. No, the entire business process was set up as a lifetime membership and changed after the fact. I know business and consumer laws are different around the world, so I'm not gonna get into any lawyerly ideas here, but what I want you to think about is what are the legal implications of this type of fraudulent behavior? So here's my verdict. Unless there's information that we don't have, like a signed contract that has completely different wording in it than what we've been noted from this story, is that I say the asshole is the small business owner who is not living up to the promises of the deal that they've made, the transactional deal that they've made with this customer who's been posting the story. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. If you agree, but for completely different reasons, also let me know. I'd love to see what kinds of conversations we can bring up from this kind of story. And if you like these breakdown stories, let me know as well. I'd love to create more of them if that's what you're into. So that's it for today's video, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you check out one of these videos. I will see you again in our next one and remember I love you be excellent to each other and just go live because your people are, are literally out there and they're just waiting for you to get up and share your message with them